everyone and welcome back to my channel and thank you so so much for tuning in with me today. So in today's video I'm going to be doing a haul try on video. I basically purchased a couple of makeup items and I wanted to just throw them all together in one video. Not all of these are brand new releases, some of them are. For example I do have the brand new Odin's Eye Snow Dream palette. I also have a new released setting powder and I have a new product by Jane Iredale. Basically, I picked up her brand new concealer. So I wanted to show you guys these products all together in one video, alongside with some other products that I just wanted to add to my collection. Again, those are not like brand, brand new releases, but they are new to my makeup collection. And I'm just gonna be putting on all of these products to my face and I'm gonna give you like a mini review wherever I can. With some of these products, I do have a little bit more experience with others, you know, they're kind of like brand new to me. Some of them were literally first impressions, but most of them, I do have an idea of what the formula actually is. And I basically just picked up a new shade in an already existing formula that I truly adore. So I really hope you are going to enjoy today's video. If you do, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And also in case you have not subscribed to my channel just yet, I would absolutely love it if you could. So just hit the subscribe button and also don't forget to ring the bell in order to stay notified about my upcoming videos. I also just want to quickly mention that I did purchase all of these products myself. This video is not sponsored nor was I sent anything in PR but I do have a bunch of affiliate links to the products. Uh, those are generated over my third party partner ShopMy so I'm going to be putting them all in my description box down below and while you are down there why not drop me a comment in case you have tried out any of the products that I'm going to be talking about in a second. But you can also just drop me a different comment, you know. Let me know your thoughts and feelings on the products or just say hi. I mean, why not? So I would say without no further ado, let's just get this video rolling. I'm going to go barefaced and let's start chatting about the very first one. All right, you guys, so I'm barefaced right now. So let's actually kick it off with putting on a primer. Although I kind of feel a little bit uncomfortable talking about this brand because ever since I've announced in my new fall makeup video that I would be still showing you this primer because I actually ended up using a different primer in that video. Uh, some stuff came to light about this brand and I just kind of feel a little bit uncomfortable but I still wanted to show you the product because I did pick it up and maybe you're still interested in it. So this is the e.l.f. Liquid Poreless Putty Primer and this retails for $10. By no means do I live under a rock and I do understand that there is a little bit of controversy surrounding e.l.f. Cosmetics at the moment. I am not an insider into the brand and you know also I don't have many products by them so I'm not a representative of this brand and you know I mean I just still wanted to show you this primer just because I told you about it in my last new makeup for the fall season video and I kind of feel silly if I would not do it nevertheless if you do want to educate yourself a little bit more on the topic there are plenty of videos out there you just have to type in Elf Cosmetics Cult. I just wanted to have clarified the fact that I am pretty much aware of what is going on. So I still wanted to show you this one though. It's definitely not my favorite one in the world. So right here is the Poreless Putty Primer that comes in a jar. It's predecessor. This is still available though. Um, I never liked this. I used this a couple of times because I do love a good blurring primer, something that blurs my pores. If something claims it's like, you know, a poreless primer or a pore blurring product, I'm always keen to like try it out. But this was so greasy, this did not blur my pores in any way. I just never really got myself into this. So this is the liquid version of this one. I feel like this is more of a smoothing primer than it is like necessarily a poor blurring primer. It's also not that great if it comes to oil control, but I feel like the price point is kind of unbeatable. And I think for $10, this is an okay primer. Not my favorite one, but also not the worst I've ever tried out. So I'm gonna clip back my hair and then we are gonna be applying it to one side of my face so you guys can kind of see what it's actually doing. My skin is just a little bit shiny from my moisturizer. As I always say that, I'm not that oily. I get a little bit oilier throughout the day, but I'm 
not as oily as you may assume. This is basically just a result of my lighting setup and the moisturizer that I'm using, which is a little bit more on the glowier side. So consistency, it's pretty runny. It's gonna run down my finger. Now let's apply a little bit of this to one side. Now I will say at first glance, it really does do a great job in blurring my pores to a certain extent and canceling out the shine without being over the top mattifying or drying because I do feel like this side is a lot shinier than this side. But as you can see, it does not cancel out the shine completely. So in that sense, it's a very like smoothing primer. Throughout the day, it doesn't do the best job in keeping it this way. This is literally when you apply it. So when you go on with your day, you know, you do get a little bit oilier, maybe in your T-zone. It's not like 100% a mattifying primer. Well, it does not really claim to be a mattifying primer as well. It basically just says on here, get the same lasting makeup grip and smooth finish of fan favorite poreless putty primer, now in a silky weightless liquid. So it actually does do what it claims to do. So let's also do the other side. I actually like the consistency as well. It has a nice texture. It's not necessarily a gripping primer though, because it does sink into your skin. So I'm definitely not mad at it. I'm just a little bit confused as into what is going on with this brand? So that leads me to the next product that I want to be talking about. And that is the new foundation that I added to my collection. And yeah, there is definitely one thing that I do want to stress out about it before I'm applying it to my face. So this is by the Sephora collection and this is the best skin ever foundation and it retails for $20. So I did pick this foundation up like about two weeks ago and I had no idea that Sephora is actually not 100% cruelty free because I always did consult their website and I always made the claim that they are against animal testing and that they don't really like test their products on animals. And you guys know I do have a cruelty free channel, so I do wanna be 100% transparent with you guys. But unfortunately, they find themselves in a weird gray zone. And I had no idea about this until I Googled it. And I was just kind of like, wait, what? I did pick up a couple of things by Sephora and I was under the impression that they were 100% cruelty free. So the gray zone is basically when you are selling to China, because this country annoys me so, so, so much at this point. It's the only country that still requires animal testing by law. Now, a brand could make a decision to not sell to China. Most of these bigger brands put profit before animal laws, and it's very much annoying. And I feel like we are living in 2023, almost 2024, and these laws need to change. I feel a little bit like weird using this product, featuring it without me actually recognizing that Sephora could do a lot better. Nevertheless, I did spend my money on it. I do want to feature it because it's quite an affordable uh, foundation with a very, very, very good formula. So if this would have been like a mediocre product, I would have probably just given it away but because it's such a good foundation, I still wanted to have featured it because it's also more accessible. It does come in such a wide array of shades. So I thought to myself, you know, I just wanted to have clarified that. A medium coverage, natural finish foundation with a long wearing anti-pollution formula that hydrates skin for up to 12 hours and is infused with skincare benefits. Best Skin Ever Liquid Foundation delivers a second skin effect and provides lasting hydration while covering imperfections. Its formula is clinically shown to reduce signs of stress, fatigue, and usage over time is proven to make skin smoother, more even, and more radiant. The bottle is made from 30% recycled glass. I kind of like the packaging as well. Now I do want to say this only comes in 25 milliliters. Usually a foundation does contain 30 milliliters. This has 0.84 fluid ounces. So 30 milliliters equals one fluid ounce. But yeah, it's also fragrance free, which I 
definitely do appreciate. Their shade range is phenomenal and I feel like Sephora definitely does have the resources to come out with a very good shade range and this is just a perfect shade match. I've got this in the shade 19.5P. So let's take a pump out on my finger. It's definitely a great winter shade for me. I feel like it might be just a little bit too light for me in the summertime because I do tan quite easily and then I lose my tan because I always just tan like naturally. I don't use any self tan or anything like that. Um, so I feel like right now it's a perfect shape match and I'm so glad that I picked it up right now and not in the summertime. In the summertime I would require maybe a little bit of a deeper shade. So as you can see this is quite a creamy foundation, not the thickest or the creamiest I've ever tried but it's not gonna run down your fingers so it's not a liquid formula. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit on one side of my face and then I can show you how well this is actually covering up everything. I also have tried this out with a beauty blender and with a brush and I actually do prefer a brush because with the sponge I kind of feel like I have to use a little bit more product. My sponge does actually absorb a little bit of the product and it gives me a little bit less coverage than if I would apply it with a brush. So I'm gonna apply it with a brush. So yeah, let's just blend it out on one side of my face. Alright, so you can see the amount of coverage I did achieve with just a little bit of the product. Um, I still have a little bit left on my finger and I feel like it's definitely medium coverage. I mean, you can still see a little bit of my redness poking through on my chin, but my chin is also kind of a problem zone, so I'm not too mad at that. But just the rest of my face, I feel like it's a very beautiful medium coverage. Um, it can definitely be built up to a fuller coverage though. And we're going to be doing that in a second, but I just wanted to show you the immediate sort of difference uh, in terms of what this foundation is actually able to do. And just look at that shade match. That is such a good shade. I really love it. If you use a glowy primer underneath it, maybe, you know, you're going to get more of that glow. But I feel like every time I'm using it with my primers of preference, it just gives me a really, really good finish and that's what I love. I love when a foundation actually does look like a second skin on my face. So let's do the other side. I just need a little bit more product. This is the coverage level that this foundation gives me with one layer of product and with using a brush but I'm also gonna go in with another layer. Although in my everyday life, I would feel comfortable just using one layer of product. I do want to show you that this is a buildable foundation and that you can achieve definitely more coverage with it. It's obviously not too much of like a harsh dry down because otherwise you would not be able to build it up and then, you know, you would move your first layer around underneath it and that's not what this foundation is. It's definitely a little bit creamier and has a little bit more of a slower dry down, but it's also not sitting around too much on the skin, you know. All right, so I do look a little bit wild right now because I did leave out my under eye area because we are going to be going in with a concealer. So I did not want to apply too much of the foundation underneath my eyes straight away. So I'm just going to use a little bit of my sponge dough to remove a little bit of the excess product just to tap it into the skin a little bit more. I feel like this is a beautiful foundation. Like this is a very, very stunning formula considering the price point. It's good, it's long wearing and I just feel like it's, it's really, really, really good. I just wish Sephora could go cruelty free. It breaks my heart, it breaks my heart that I love this so much. A really, 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 really good foundation, but yeah. 
So let's move on to a newly released concealer. And this is also by a brand that I tend to feature a lot here on my channel. And this one is most definitely cruelty free as well. All of the other products coming up are cruelty free, rest assured. So this is by Jane Iredale and it's a new pure match liquid concealer and it retails for $30. So I did try out four different products for concealing prior to this release by Jane Iredale. Those were like the cream concealers that came in a jar. This was more of a color correcting sort of under eye concealer. This had a little bit of a peach tint and I also have this one. Uh, this is the Circle Delete Concealer in the shade 01. I actually kind of enjoyed this one but these types of concealers are definitely not my favorite ones and these are also a little bit older and then I had one with a felt tip. And I never really enjoyed that one. I also did not enjoy the applicator too much. And then this year, Jane Iredit had released a product, an under eye concealer, a new one with SPF 30. And I enjoyed this one. It's the Enlighten, no, it's, yeah, Enlighten Plus Concealer. I really did enjoy it. What shade do I have in this? Hmm, that's a very good question. I can't really tell you what shade this is right now. I'm going to put the shade right here. But I really did enjoy this formula. And I ended up using this quite a lot. And look at this applicator. This comes with like one of these like metal deep puffing sort of under eye applicators. I really liked it. But she has now released a traditional doe foot concealer. So a liquid concealer here in 16 different shades. So initially I did pick up the shade 6 neutral which is described as a medium light with neutral beige undertones and I thought to myself that it was leaning just a little bit yellow and then I made the mistake of picking up a new shade and I picked up the shade 7W which is described as a medium light with peach undertones and now this one looks even worse I don't think this is peach this isn't peach look at this this is peach Look at the difference here, if you can see it. So I might just end up using the six neutral one. I'm a little bit disappointed that, you know, the peach on the tone is straight up yellow. So let's have a look at the claims. What are they actually saying about this? And they are always saying so much. They're always making so, so many claims. I'm just going to give you the short version of this. So they are saying it's a medium buildable coverage, goes on creamy, but dries down to a soft matte finish. It also has a weightless and breathable feel. In all honesty, I don't know if I prefer this over this one. This kind of reminds me of the Tower 28 concealer. And if you've watched my review on the Tower 28 concealer, I was not the biggest fan of it. I definitely wasn't. So this kind of reminds me of an expensive version of the exact same formula. I'm still going to use it today and let's use the shade 6 neutral. I still feel like they could have done a better job with the shade range. They could have like done some neutral cool undertones, a little bit of pink, why not? You know, this is going to look very strange now in comparison to my foundation shade. See how yellow this actually looks compared to my foundation? I'm just going to try and do a little bit of a dot of the 7W shade. It's also yellow. It's just a different kind of yellow, but this is not peach. I am so confused. I might just try out 7W. This looks so weird. I might have to balance this out now. But let's actually blend it out. This definitely does look a little bit out of place. So I'm going to add a little bit of this 6 neutral shade. That is definitely a yellow shade. But what can you do? I'm just going to use that. Now I feel like, you know, my shape match has gone to shreds. So I'm just going to have to. I'm going to have to do this now. I have to apply it onto my nose. A little bit on my chin and in the middle of my forehead just to balance out this shade. Now first off I feel like the coverage definitely medium. It's not like a full-on full coverage like concealer that's gonna get rid of everything that you have underneath your eyes. Also I do have a little bit more of a finer line running underneath this eye in particular, the product does settle in a bit. So in terms of texture, this really does remind me of the Tower 28 concealer because that concealer is also kind of creasing on me. And this one does the exact same thing. It really does. And I end up just having to blend this out for quite a while. This, honestly, this one, I do prefer that one. 
<laughs> I don't know why. I feel like it's giving me more coverage. It's kind of meant for underneath your eyes. And this shade is so much better. So let's actually compare it to the 7W, which claims to be a peach undertone. I'm not colorblind. This is almost like peach pink. And this one, it's straight up yellow. This is not peach, it's yellow. Let's swatch the 6 neutral one. I mean, it might be a little bit more neutral, but this one definitely has the best undertone for me, the one in the middle. This is creasing though. Like, this line right here is so enhanced. And this is only for underneath my eyes. I do prefer this one. However, on the rest of my face now, I feel like it's actually a good concealer. It has medium coverage. So if you're using this concealer to cover up a lot of like redness, maybe it's not the best, but for underneath your eyes, if you do have any fine lines, it's going to settle into them. But all right, that being said, I'm just gonna quickly proceed with an eye primer. I just wanna put an eye primer on my eyelids and I'm just gonna use the exact same eye primer that I've been using for such a long time now and I've been loving it. And I'm gonna use a little bit of my Sigma eyeshadow base primer and this is the shade Persuade. It's really like an eye primer that is a little bit tacky, but it also conceals and I love it. So. I'm just going to apply this and you'll probably see how striking of a difference this is going to be because this is more on the pink side. So my eye primer is applied so let's actually move on to the setting powder. And this is kind of a new shade in an already existing formula. But I love this powder so I thought let's try this one out. And this is by Nude by Nature. It's their translucent loose finishing powder and this retails for $27. So Nude by Nature is actually an Australian brand and look at this. This is their normal shade. their just like translucent setting powder shade and I was using this so much. There was a time where I constantly reached for this. I feel like I've pretty much like emptied half of this container already and this comes with 10 grams of product. I really really did did enjoy this for a long long time and so there are three brand new shades. There is a banana powder which is a yellow powder, then there is a pearl powder which looked like a super white powder. The one that I have is now called natural. It has a little bit of like maybe like a beigey undertone, but to be honest with you, this always came across as like very translucent on my skin, but there was like a straight up white powder now. But guess what? I actually picked up the pink powder. It's called Soft Rose. I haven't tried it out yet though. Can you see the sticker is still on my lid? But this definitely has a pink tint to it. And maybe that's gonna come in handy with this concealer, but look at how much this concealer has creased now on me. Oh no, this concealer is just not for my under eye. <laughs> it's just not it. It's just not it for my under eye. Anyway, let's do some ASMR and let's remove the sticker. That was just kind of like a crappy ASMR. <laughs> now this um, product comes with a mashing nut, but I kind of like that the lid has a stopper so you won't be spilling any of the product. It does not appear to be over the top pink at all. But let's see what it's gonna do. First off, I love the quality of this powder. This powder is so finely milled. It just is so good in setting your makeup. I can see that it has definitely given me a little bit of a pink tint, which I like. I really, really like this powder. This powder is just great. Let's hope it's gonna set the concealer on this side as well as on the other side. I mean, I'm impressed with this powder. This powder is beautiful. This is amazing. So I'm so happy to have this. You know, it gives me such a subtle sort of pink to my skin, like very, very subtle. And I like that. I also forgot to mention this is a talc free powder. And just considering it's talc free, this has blurred everything. It just has set everything into place. Looks very airbrushed as well. I really do enjoy this powder quite a lot. All right, so let's actually move on to the next product. So I'm just going to proceed with my beloved Victoria Beckham Beauty 
baby blade eyebrow pencil. I have recently uploaded an entire ranking of the entire collection of all of the products that Victoria Beckham Beauty does carry. And if you watch that video, you know how much I love this. It's so good, a little bit pricey, but it's so, 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 so good. So I'm gonna be applying this and usually I would proceed afterwards with my Kosas airbrow. But I'm feeling courageous today and I actually did pick up a new brow sort of tint gel. So we're going to be trying that out. But first off, let me actually fill in my brows and then I'll be right back with um, the new product. My brows are alive again, but I do want to risk using a different eyebrow gel than my beloved Kosas airbrow. So this is by Make Beauty and it's their Sculpting Brow Tint. Tinted brow gel and it retails for $23. I definitely do want to create a full face review on this brand. Drop me a comment if you're actually interested in it. But I picked up their brow gel. This is one of my recent purchases from the brand. I have tried out a lot of their products. This packaging looks very, very prestigious. It's very like luxury packaging, really, really pretty. Uh, looks like a mascara, to be honest with you. So it's available in six shades. So I've already filled in my brows. So I really have to try this out on like bare brows one day, but I don't know why I'm not trusting this. Just 100% it's just because I found my perfect formula already. So when I open this up, what shade do I actually have? I've got cool brown. This wand is massive. This is big. Let me compare this to the Kosas one. Yeah, this is much smaller and that is just a perfect sort of size for my brows so this is bigger so let's see one swipe how am I gonna do this like that also I should have mentioned that this is a first impression uh, I've never used this product so I already don't like the size of this brush. It's huge. This is also quite a deep shade. Maybe I should have picked up a different shade. Maybe I should have picked up warm brown instead of the cool brown. So anyway, let's uh, do the other side as well. Because I'm right-handed, I don't know what am I gonna do with this one. This is gonna be difficult. This has a lot of hold. I'm just not sure if the shade is 100% my thing and this brush is too big. <laughs> if that brush would have been smaller, I would have maybe loved this gel. Like, but this brush makes it almost... It makes it very hard to navigate through your brows if you don't have very thick, thick, thick brows. So let's move on to the bronzer, to the blush and the highlighter. In terms of bronzers, I did not pick up a newly released bronzer, but I picked up a, a new shade in a bronzer formula that I really, really like. And this is by De Balm and it's their Balm Desert Bronzer. This is the Balm Desert and it's almost like a bronzer blush. I use this as a bronzer. It has a little bit of a purple undertone. So for some people, this might just be um, you know, a blush for me, it's it's working as a bronzer. I just have to be a little bit more light-handed with this product. But, you know, it's the newest one to my collection, so let's actually apply it. It's definitely not a new release. This product has been around for years by now. It's not bad. I actually like the undertone. I just have to have a very light hand with this. It's very pretty. It works really well if you have, like, a neutral to cool undertone as well. But all right, I'm just gonna get rid of my clips. Um, I've got to say, I really love these type of bronzers. The Balm makes some incredible bronzers. Again, this has been a diehard favorite of mine for so, so many years now. And this is the newest edition. This was the only one that was missing from my collection. Now I've got all of the Balm bronzers. And I've got to say, I mean, this is my favorite one. This might be my second favorite one. So let's move on to the blush. And for today, I actually picked up 
a new shade in a formula that I'm very, very familiar with and that I truly, truly love. But every time I want to try something out from this brand, it's quite a little bit of an investment because this is quite a pricey brand. So I was waiting a little bit until I made the jump, but I always was eyeing this shade in particular. And I know I love the formula, so I was just like, why not? So I did pick up the Vanish Blush Stick by Hourglass. It retails for $46. I already had one shade. And you guys may know I'm not the biggest fan of a cream blush because they usually just dissipate into thin air after a couple of hours. My skin tends to eat cream blush up. This formula, it's the best one. It's like the one of the best ones, honestly, but for me, it's the best one. And I always wanted to try out this shade in particular. It's called Ravel and it's described as a warm scarlet. And you guys may know, I actually do love a red blush. So I was like, I really want to try this. I really want to try this. I also have a different shade. Let me actually grab that one. So the other shade that I have in this formula is called Loyal and it's a rose wood. It's very neutral, sort of like pinky, beigey. It's, it's very, very pretty. There aren't many cream blushes that don't fade on my skin, but this formula is one of them. So I'm just going to swatch this. So because it's a scarlet, it has a slight orange tint. It's not completely red red as in a blue red. This will definitely have a little bit of an orange tint. I just hope it shows up red and not completely orange. We shall see. Oh, let's see what color it's going to be turning on my skin tone. It's always a surprise. I just love this formula. It just looks like so natural though. Although I might have gone a little bit overboard, but it looks pretty. I feel like this is exactly the type of like color that I do prefer in winter time. And these hourglass sticks, although they are a little bit pricier, they are phenomenal. So let's move on to the highlighter. I don't have a new highlighter either. I don't. So I think I'm just gonna go in with one of my latest purchases. Redimension Hydra Dew Luminizer and this retails for $42. That is the shade Prosecco. I think this one is going to work with the eye makeup that I'm kind of planning to do. This is really, really pretty. The more I use this, the more I love this. And I've been using this quite a lot, as you can tell. My embossing is almost gone. I really enjoy it. I just have to go ham with my brush to pick it up because it's more of a big gelée formula. It's so beautiful. Just look at that. Just look at this effect. I mean, oh, that is just such a beautiful powder. I love this on the tip of my nose. I really, really love it. It's so stunning. It's literally wet glow and yeah i do love this highlighter i mean i've already talked about this in my full face of rms beauty that's where you know i featured this for the very first time but i just wanted to pull this out again to show you how beautiful this glow is it's just stunning so i've been really happy with this so let's move on to the eyes and i picked up a brand newly released eyeshadow palette and i cannot wait to play with this this is going to be so much fun. And this is by Odin's Eye. It's their holiday release. And this one is called Snow Dream and it retails for $43. So Odin's Eye is definitely no stranger to my channel. I have featured them in many shorts and in my eyeshadow palette ranking videos. And every year they are releasing a holiday collection. Last year I was too late to actually snatch a palette. But this year I was on time and I also was quite surprised that they had re-released their eyeshadow palettes from last year because there was always this one palette that I was eyeing and I always wanted to have it. I always wanted to try it. So this year I actually picked this one up. This is not the one that we're going to be using today, but just rest assured, I'm going to be posting some shorts, some looks with this palette as well. This is their Christmas Eve palette from last year. Just look at that packaging. Isn't that packaging so beautiful? They're always having such nice packaging, but this color story, this is just such a beautiful, cool toned dream. It has a lot of blues, some lilacs, some like taupe, some gray, some gold. I mean, this was everything that I wanted. And I was like, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this. Although it's a year old by now, I never had it. And then they also came out with two brand new color stories. There was one called Hey Reindeer. 
I did not vibe with that one. I didn't get the Christmas vibes. I didn't get the holiday vibes. I was just like, when I looked at the color story, I was like, nah, this does not really speak to me that much. But the one that I picked up, stop it. This is so stunning. This is so, 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 so beautiful. This is the new Snow Dream palette. And just look at that cute snowman. I mean, this packaging, it's... It's everything. It's so stunning, but what's inside really got me. This has some fantastic, like, neutral shades, yet it has some beautiful pastels. It has, like, this peachy pastel, this minty pastel, a little bit of green, a pop of red, and then the shimmers are so beautiful. We do have more of a taupey brown, we have a little bit of gold, and then also, like, more of a holographic shade called frankincense, and a beautiful purple called Celebrate and also more of a minty shade in here as well. I haven't tried this yet because this only has arrived at my doorstep about like three days ago. So this is brand new to my collection, but I thought, you know, I wanted to feature it in today's video and create a look with it. Now, I don't think I'm gonna go very colorful today because I kind of want to keep the colorful looks for um, my shorts tab, you know, I do want to create some more looks with this palette over there. Now, another reason why I don't really want to do something too colorful is the fact that I do have a lip product and that one has a very specific color. And I feel like that lip color would match this brown perfectly. So I'm going to be starting off with this sort of muted yellow shade here. It's called Garland. I'm going to use this and I'm going to mainly focus on the inner part of my upper eyelids. Um, yeah, and then we're going to be moving on with probably one of these brown shades. But yeah, let me actually try that one. And the embossing is so pretty. It has like a cute snowflake in there. All right, so far so good. I've got to say I really like this yellow almost like pastel shade it's really really lovely like i don't think i've got any shade by odin's eye that is this type of color so let's actually move on and i'm gonna be using the shade feast now which is this shade right here it's almost like more of a neutral mid-toned brown and i'm just gonna apply that all over my crease and just blend it out so yeah Let's go with that one. All right, so thus far, these have blended out amazingly. They look very, very smooth on my eyes and they are buildable. I really do enjoy it. Now I want to deepen up this look. I want to deepen up the outer corner of my eye. And I definitely do want to go in with the shade Gotcha. Gotcha. I don't know, sometimes it's hard to read the font, but I'm gonna take this chestnut brown. I'm gonna use this to deepen up my outer corner. Okay, so let's move on to my waterline and I'm definitely gonna be using my Martin Cosmetics uh, eyeliner in the shade Maroon Brown, because I feel like it's gonna match. It's going to match this look, so. This one right here, I'm just going to quickly apply it and then I'm going to move on to apply some eyeshadow underneath my eyes as well to my lower lash line. So for the lower lash line, I most definitely do want to go in with the shade that I was just using. And after that, I might be putting a little bit of garland just to the inner part of my lower lash line as well. All right, so I cleaned up the edges a little bit and now I'm just going to proceed with my NYX glitter glue because... I just know with Odin's eye, you know, I better be on the safe side than sorry. So I'm gonna start off with the shade Sweather and then go on with the shade Hugs. So I'm gonna be picking this up with my finger and then I'm gonna proceed uh, blending it out with a brush. This gold almost has like a peachy reflect in it. Wow, this actually has a stunning shift. Let's see how it's gonna translate to my eyes. It definitely does have more of like, almost like a peachy brown base to it. And then the sparkles, they don't look like a flat gold. They kind of almost look 
green. This might be the most stunning golden shade I've ever tried out. This is insanely beautiful. And usually I don't like golds, but this is special. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with this shade Hugs, this one, and I'm gonna put it onto the rest of my lid, basically. Wow, I did not expect this outcome. This is so stunning. I'm blinded. I feel like this is honestly a perfect Christmas palette. Most definitely. These two shades together, they look so pretty. But I kind of still want to put something in my inner corner. And I kind of feel like I'm just going to go for it, you guys. I'm just going to use a little bit of that shade Mary, this minty one. And I'm just going to put it just a little bit in my inner corner, right? Let's just try that one out. So all in all, I do love how this look turned out. Now, if I would have changed just one thing, I would have added maybe a little bit of a deeper brown to the palette. I feel like this brown being the deepest shade in the entire palette, the palette leans a little bit light, light to mid-toned. And I wish there could have been just a little bit of a deeper brown in order to really smoke it up and to make the look even more dramatic. but. Usually I don't like gold, you guys, but this gold is stunning. This has a brown base and it's just, I love it. I love how this look turned out. I'm really, really happy with it. And I think it's really beautiful. Like this formula is top notch. I love the mats, how the mats have performed today. Very, very good. Very, very pretty palette. And I cannot wait to share more looks with you guys to create more looks. So yeah. Just have a look at my shorts tab and on my Instagram because I will definitely post more with this palette. And I cannot wait to try out this like rat shade right here. Mmm, so pretty. I can't wait. But yeah, so let's actually move on to mascara. And this is not a brand new release. This was released a couple of months ago, but I just recently got my hands on it. And I definitely did want to feature it on my channel. Also, because it's a brand that I never really had anything by. And I never talked about this brand on my channel. So this is by Fenty Beauty. And it's the Hella Thick Volumizing Mascara. And this retails for $19. So yeah, it's true. I've never talked about Fenty Beauty on my channel ever. And recently, you know, I made a couple of purchases by them. I really wanted to show you guys this mascara because it's also still new to the brand. It's a newer product in their line. Let's have a look at the wand. So the shape of the brush is actually one of my favorite shapes. Uh, it's not silicone though. I usually prefer a silicone brush for some bizarre reason. It comes with fiber bristles and they are quite short. So this is supposed to be a volumizing mascara and I'm gonna be applying it and I'm gonna let you know my feelings and thoughts on it. The amount of times I wore it, it has never flaked, it has never smudged. So in that sense, it's actually a great formula. But I'm gonna just, uh, you know, curl my lashes a little bit. All right, look at that. You could almost think that I am wearing falsies. I don't, I never wear fake lashes, never. But just look at that. That is insane. This is so dramatic. Now, every time I am using a volumizing mascara, I always feel like it's kind of gluing my lashes together in a very weird way. It's not a bad mascara, that's not what I'm saying. I think the effect is pretty. But if I like built this one up, it gets just a little bit clumpy. I always prefer it if a mascara just basically separates my lashes. And I think this is separating, but it's also separating in a very weird way where my lashes are kind of getting glued together. And I don't know if you can see, it's just a little bit of clumps right there. It's not bad. It's also not bad for the price point, but it's also not my all time favorite one. So let's do the other side as well. It's very, very volumizing though. I feel like my lashes like look like crazy. <laughs> they look super dramatic. So, you know, if you want that, if you want something that gives you that 
very like ultra black sort of voluminous effect this would be a great mascara for you to try out i also like the brush there was nothing wrong with the size of the brush there was nothing wrong with the shape of the brush it's actually a good mascara and it's not smudging it's not flaking you know it's not going to give you raccoon eyes or any of that so that's good about the mascara all right but that's enough for the mascara so let's actually move on to the last product for today let's actually move on to my lips for the lips i actually did not pick up a brand new release I picked something up that I always was like really curious about. I always wanted to try out this product and I never had it. So this one is by Bare Minerals and it's their Mineralist Lasting Matte Liquid Lipstick and this retails for $22. I always wanted to try out a lip product by Bare Minerals so I picked this one up. It's a liquid lipstick. Um, I'm not sure if we need to apply a lip liner, maybe. But the shade that I've got is the shade Determined and it's actually described as a soft caramel brown nude and I thought it would work very very well with the eye look. That's why I also went with the colors you know and the palette because I had this one and I was like I really want to try this out. I've never tried it. <laughs> so we shall see if I like this formula. Do I want to put on a lip liner? I think I do. I think I do. I'm gonna put on a lip liner. I might actually use one of my lawless lip liners i've got like a deeper shade by them called burnished all right so i'm not sure if this lip liner is going to match this um shade at all but we shall see so i'm gonna apply the bare minerals liquid lipstick and see if i like the formula or not because i've never used it also it has a little bit of a scent but a really nice scent so let's apply it I love the shade. The shade looks so pretty with the eye look now. Now it's drying down. Oh, but this is a nice formula. This is actually a really good formula because I feel like it's not pulling my lips like weirdly and it's also quite, it's quite blurring, isn't it? It's not that line enhancing. Some of those liquid lipsticks, they are crazy line enhancing. Super fast drying, yet it's not like one of these very uncomfortable liquid lipsticks that is pulling your lips together and where your lips are feeling super dry. Let me know if you have tried out this uh, formula in particular and if you would like me to feature more shades because they've got a couple of other shades that I was really eyeing, but I love this one. This is like a really pretty, warm tone brown shade and it's perfect for this season as well but that's it you guys those were all of the products that i had for today's video so if you have tried out anything in today's video or if you've tried out anything else please do drop me a comment down below and if you enjoyed today's video before you're leaving please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also in case you have not yet don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also ring the bell in order to get notified about my upcoming videos and until next time Please do take care. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.